So what do we got here? Uh, got this sword I want to sell you. All right. And there's a mark on it that might be Tiffany's. Tiffany's, yeah. OK. It's not as good a shape as it was new. I guarantee you Tiffany never put anything this ugly out now. <laughs> <laughs> When I first saw the sword, I thought it was so cool, and I was quite surprised when somebody pointed me out the maker's mark on it. Fingers crossed that it'll bring in a, a lot of money and uh, that it is actually a Tiffany sword. All right, uh, where'd you get it? I got it in Walla Walla, Washington, in a little antique shop. I'm a commercial photographer, so I used it as a prop and forgot about it for 10 years. Okay. It looks like a cavalry sword we used during the Civil War. You can always tell by the handle and the shape, and it's got all the normal wear you would expect on it. You have no amateur restorations yeah. here, but I mean, it's got a good, you know, patina to it. It looks nice. It's just the Tiffany thing is really, really throwing me off. I mean, I've seen hundreds, if not thousands, of Civil War era cavalry swords, and none of them said Tiffany on it. I didn't know they were a sword maker. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, they'll make pretty much anything, but if they did, they were generally presentation pieces, made of silver, very, very ornate, very beautiful swords that you would never want to take into battle. Uh, they're probably one of the most counterfeited jewelry companies in the world. Uh, that's because most of their stuff is so nice. Hell, even the Super Bowl trophy is made by Tiffany. It's not out of the question that a jewelry company would be asked to help aid in war efforts. So if this sword is made by Tiffany, it's gotta be worth a pretty penny. I'm just not sure how many. What are you looking to get out of it, my man? A $500 check, that's what I'd like. Um, that doesn't seem out of the ballpark if it's made by Tiffany. I just don't know. I've never seen one like it. I'll tell you what, man, I got a uh, sword guy that works for me. Let me see what he uh, knows about this stuff and I'll grab him for you, all right? All right. Why don't you uh, hang out and take a look around and he should be here in a few minutes. Okay, fantastic. No, it's a cavalry sword. Looks like Civil War era, but I've never seen Tiffany make one. Tiffany? Yeah. For the fancy army. Nothing but the best. This is the Model 1840 Heavy Cavalry Sword, what's called the Wrist Breaker. Why is it called a Wrist Breaker? The predecessor swords would bend and flex, and the soldiers said they were good for cutting nothing but butter. <laughs> So when they designed the Model 1840, they put a lot of extra steel on the backside. It made the sword a lot heavier. And you're using that to just lop heads off or whatever you're doing. Whatever. Lop heads, slash, poke sometimes. But as you're hacking and slashing through with all your arm's momentum and the horse's momentum, sometimes it'd snap your wrist, <laughs> giving it the nickname, you old wrist breaker. Sounds like a design flaw. <laughs> uh, it was loved and hated, but a lot of people don't realize that Tiffany did make swords for the Civil War. The presentation sword, which you would expect from Tiffany, that were all real pretty, and you really didn't want to wear them into battle. But they wanted officers to have really good functioning swords, too. So they outsourced the blades from a really high-end German company. It's a PDL right here. It's a Paul D. Lundschloss. OK. <laughs> and they made functional swords for the officers. I can tell you right now, stamping Tiffany and Co. in something isn't that hard to do. So mm -hmm. question is, is it definitely Tiffany? Absolutely. Well, the Tiffany mark's almost gone on this side. Anything Tiffany is usually reproduced and faked out there. So when you go over a piece of Tiffany, you have to do a lot of detailed inspection to make sure that it is Tiffany and not a reproduction. You know, Tiffany's a little more sought after than your standard Absolutely. US swords. One of the things Tiffany did, instead of using a brass guard, they would use an iron guard. And yep, that's definitely iron and not brass. And then the PDL mark, they did have a die that was broken, and a lot of them do look like a lowercase r instead of a big P. So is it real, man? Yeah, it's real. Yes. All right, that's why I hired you. <laughs> <laughs> if someone sells it in the shop, it's going to be you. What do you think you can get out of it? <sighs> this one, you know, it does have some issues here with uh, the leather strap missing. It's actually coming off in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> and that would make it a little bit more valuable. But 1500 Excellent. Very good. All right, man. Well, get back to work. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks.
the wrist breaker swords, something every Civil War collector wants. But to have one made by Tiffany, that's like the highlight of anyone's collection is to show off their Tiffany sword. All right, so you said you wanted 500 for it. Yep. But you brought the expert in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't always work out that well for me, does it? Now, you've just educated me. Let's go eight. You know, man, I really don't have to have it. You know, it's... You don't have one. It's a Tiffany's. <sighs> you know, I am going to have to get it rewrapped. It's going to have to be cleaned up a little bit. We'll do 650. 675, you got a deal. All right, 675, man. Cool. You got it. Why don't you go ahead and find Rocco back there. He'll write you up. Great. Thank you. Uh, 675. Now I have some money to go spend uh, something for the girlfriend at Tiffany's. 